Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This is Hitler's War from Avalon Hill. Apparently this is, I think this is three games in one. Operation Barbarossa, Fall of Germany, and War for Europe. Hitler's War examines the war in Europe at several levels. Operation Barbarossa concentrates on the great ground struggle waged for four long years between Stalingrad and Berlin. The fall of Germany begins at the eve of the great amphibious invasion of France and expands the war into the West. And the war for Europe completes the picture with an examination of the entire six years of war and all its ramifications. Great fleets of bombers may be launched towards enemy targets. Swift Axis raiders joined by their deadly brethren. The U-boat can attempt to break the British supply line with America. Mighty armadas may sail the challenge in combat for those for control of the seas and much more. It says complexity is a uh, higher level of medium and it's pretty suitable for solitaire. And time scale is three turns per year. Map scale is 300 clicks per hex. And it's for two or three players, uh, depends on the scenario. And then the playing time from one and a half hours for the first scenario to five hours for an entire campaign. So it sounds like it's actually not three games then. It sounds like it's three different scenarios. Okay, let's take a look inside. Out of all these games I've played over the years, I've never actually played this one. This, this box is in pretty good shape. This is actually, I'd say the box is collector's quality. The game's punched though, but it's in good shape for lots of counters in here. It looks like they're all, at least most are single-sided. Or maybe all of them are. Alright. And it's got a little dice here too. And here's the rule book. Let's see how big that is. Rule book's about 19 pages, 20, including the charts. Let's go through it real quick. So it starts with the Barbarossa scenario and the sequence of play. Maybe it is three separate games, actually. Sequence of play, you got movement phase, followed by combat, which consists of initial attack sub-phase and exploitation attack sub-phase, and then a production phase. So there's production going on here. Going over stacking limits, no more intense strength points. Uh, may occupy the same hex at the end of a movement phase. Going over combat, initial attack, exploitation, assault resolutions, and advancing into friendly hexes here. Going over supply and production points. And here's the scenario setup and special rules. All right, so the fall of Germany. So, yeah, that is a separate sequence of play. So they're not three scenarios. They're three separate games. All right, player turn sequence for that one is movement, followed by combat phase, then initial attack sub-phase, which consists of announce all initial attacks, conduct amphibious invasions, resolve defensive assaults, resolve attacker's assaults, make advances, and then the exploitation phase, followed by the production phase. So now it's going over C movement here. Amphibious invasions, naval fire, coastal air power. And it's got some examples uh, here to help you learn the game. And here's the setup and special rules. So that's only a few pages of rules for each of these first two scenarios. So this should be relatively easy to learn. That's why I think that's why one of the many reasons why Avalon Hill games were so well liked is because they were a lot easier to learn than today's games and they were a lot of fun too. Don't get me wrong, today's games are fantastic, but the older games were easier to learn usually. Alright, and here's a campaign game, The War for Europe. Does this have a separate, separate sequence of play? It doesn't look like it so far. And there's a setup and special rules. Then there's a campaign game too. Got some optional rules down here. And on the back here you have an advanced table, firepower table, player turn sequence just for the second scenario. Terrain effects chart, sea transport capabilities, and combat capabilities summary. Cool. And here's your basic unit costs. 
you have, what's this right here, an Allied Record card. Soviet record card. So they're considering this. This is actually bad terminology because Allies actually included the Soviets, so they mean Western uh, European uh, Front Allies there. Now you got Soviet record card. And then Axis record card. Uh oh, we have some floating counters in here. That's not good. When I see that, it makes me worry that the game might be missing a few if they didn't uh, store them well. But. Let's pull those out. This should be, be a mounted map like most Avalon Hill games. Hmm. Smaller than I thought the map would be, but it looks kind of cool. It's actually a nice looking map for this era. Oh, it's from 1984. So yeah, that map's not bad for 1984. It looks pretty good. Down here you got the firepower table advanced table and over here you have sea transport capabilities terrain effects chart unit capabilities research results combat capabilities summary basic game unit cost national morale and player turn sequence and here's your they call the time record I guess that's more like a turn record track but yeah this this looks pretty good Thanks for watching. I hope to try this one uh, pretty soon. This looks like it'll be a lot of fun and easy to learn. And if you haven't heard, I'm selling used war games on my website. So check back there periodically to see what I'm selling. And have a good evening.